some pilots keep the feet on the rudder pedals when taking off and landing. Other pilots keep the heels on the floor. So which technique is correct? Hi, my name is Manga Nordal. I am an air and captain and instructor. In this video, I will explain how the rudder pedals are used to maintain direction and control and to control the brakes. Those skis are essential when we land or when we have to abort a takeoff. The rudder is used for direction and control during takeoff and landing and to counteract side slip in flight. Yes, of course, you can use the rudder to create a side slip as well. In the early days, the rudder was controlled with a simple bar with wires connected to the rudder. Later on, rods with rudder pedals were attached to the bar. This is the cockpit of a Spitfire. Early airplanes were small, light and slow. They had tail skid and were designed to operate on grass fields. The tail skid creates enough drag to slow down the aircraft after landing. However, without brakes and limited rudder efficiency at low speeds, it can be difficult to taxi and a wing walker is required to make tight turns. Today do most light aircraft have a steerable tailwheel or nose wheel and it's controlled with the rudder pedals. As the airplane evolved, the main wheels got brakes. Some aircraft designed in the 1930s up to the 1950s are equipped with pneumatic brakes, air pressure. They are operated with a lever on the control stick together with the rudder pedals. When you want to use the brakes on both wheels, you keep the rudder pedals centered. When you want to use the brake on one side, you press the rudder pedal on that side and squeeze the brake lever. MiG-15 has such pneumatic brakes and you can hear the pshht sound every time the pilot releases the brake lever. Nowadays, most aircraft are equipped with hydraulic brakes. They are operated by pressing down the top of the rudder pedals. Therefore, the brakes are called toe brakes. The left pedal operates the brake on the left main wheel and vice versa. On light aircraft like the Cessna 172, the brake system is very simple. Each rudder pedal is attached to a master cylinder with a hydraulic fluid. When you press down the top of the pedal, the pressure in the brake line increases and the brake is activated. Believe it or not, but the T-38 Talon has this kind of brakes and that contributes to a pretty long landing distance. However, the norm is that high performance and heavy aircraft have brakes augmented by hydraulic pressure, typically at 3000 psi. Transport category aircraft have brakes with anti-skid and most of them have automatic brakes as well, auto brake. Furthermore, Braking is automatically inhibited until the wheel has started to rotate after landing or for a certain time after touchdown. It can be quite complicated. This is the brake system of a Boeing 737. When you are learning to fly, the instructor will make sure you learn how to use the brakes and when not to use them. If you, for example, ride the brakes during taxiing, they will quickly wear out, that's expensive, and they may even overheat. And if you accidentally touch the brakes during takeoff or landing, you might damage the tires, or in a worst case scenario, lose directional control. 
Therefore, most instructors will tell you to keep your heels on the floor and use your toes to control the rudder. When you need to brake, you will slide your feet up to the top of the pedals. This works perfect 99.9% .9 of the time. The remaining 0.1% is when you suddenly need to use the brakes, for example during a landing in a gusty crosswind. The critical part is when the aircraft slows down and the rudder loses authority, as it is written in the Cessna 172 Pilot Operating Handbook. Quote, After touchdown, hold a straight course with the steerable nose wheel, that's with the rudder pedals, and occasional braking if necessary. End quote. My experience is that it can be tricky to slide the feet up to the top of the pedals while you at the same time are working with the rudder pedals to maintain directional control. While most light aircraft are operated at uh, pretty large runways, the situation is different for transport category aircraft, the airliners. Quite often, they cannot take off with maximum weight. And in those cases, the takeoff decision speed, V1, is calculated to give the best takeoff weight, so you can carry as much payload as possible. If you then experience an engine failure before V1, you must stop. The takeoff calculation assumes that you reduce engine power to idle and apply maximum braking within two seconds after engine failure. And this gives a safety margin of zero. Yes, zero margin. This video is from an ATA-72 simulator. The runway is only 900 meters long. The engine fails just before V1, and when the first officer calls V1, the captain has already decided to stop. <laughs> the ATR-72 doesn't have auto brake, therefore it makes sense to keep the feet on the pedals during takeoff and landing. But larger transport aircraft have auto brake. In that case, it should make more sense to keep the heels on the floor, because when you touch the brakes, even lightly, the auto brake will disconnect. When asked, one third of the airline pilots will say they always keep the feet on the pedals. One third say they always keep the heels on the floor. And the last third will say, it depends. When flying without auto brake, they will keep the feet on the pedals. And when the auto brake is armed, they will keep the heels on the floor. So, what's my take on this? I always keep my feet on the pedals during taxi takeoff and landing. The reason is that I am convinced that it provides better directional control when it's needed at most. And that is when unexpected things happen. It can be a gusty crosswind, runway incursion, for example a vehicle or an airplane or animal, whatever, a sudden engine failure, or maybe a damage to the landing gear like an explosion in a tire. During my initial flight training, one of the instructors, an airline pilot, told me to keep my feet on the rudder pedals. He said, when you are taking off and landing, you must be able to use the rudder and the brakes without delay. You use your heels to move the rudder and to steer the nose wheel. And you use your toes to operate the brakes. After all, they are called toe brakes, right? To make this work, you must adjust the seat and rudder pedals correctly. You must be able to press full rudder without stretching your leg fully out, just like you adjust the pedals on a bicycle. And with full rudder, you must be able to apply maximum brake. Since then, I have used this technique for taxi takeoff and landing. 
and it has saved my butt at least two times. I can mention one example. I was flying a Mall M5 and landed in 10 knots crosswind. This is inside the maximum demonstrated crosswind for this aircraft. The Mall M5 is a tail dragger and it behaves perfectly on unpaid runways, but less so on paid runways. On that specific landing, we were four persons on board and the center of gravity was therefore further aft when compared to flying without a passenger. This gave the rudder a shorter moment arm. And when the aircraft slowed down after landing, I ran out of rudder and I got a gust. And the aircraft started to weather wind into the wind. And only a quick application of the brake kept us on the runway. If my heels had been on the floor, I would have lost control because it happened so fast. Therefore, I keep my feet on the rudder pedals when I taxi, take off and land. This technique works on almost every airplane. I said almost because the Piper Cub, for example, has heel brakes. So, how about you? Which technique do you use? Please leave a reply in the comment sections below here and I would love to learn why you prefer one of the techniques over the other. Thank you so much. And that's all for this time. Please support my channel by clicking like and yes, you know the drill. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning. Minimum. One hundred, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty. Retard, retard, retard.